in pit lane, the summer series, proudly brought to you by the All Seasons Eco Resort, Phillip Island. It's 50 years since Sir Jack Brabham won his first world title. He won three of them, and that's not a bad achievement. I mean, winning one is good. Winning three, I think, is just showing off, quite frankly. But not only that, his, uh, his sons haven't done too badly either. I mean, two of them have won the Le Mans 24-hour race, plus a whole bunch of other races as well. If I went through the achievements, we'd be here all night. Now, a third generation is joining the racing dynasty and he was in action last weekend at Phillip Island where he finished third in the Formula Ford race in some pretty tricky conditions. Please welcome to In Pit Lane, Matthew Brabham and Jeff Brabham. Guys, welcome hey. to In Pit Lane. Hey. Yeah, thanks, Brett. Well, it's good to be here. Yeah. Now, Matthew, we'll start with you with just briefly on Phillip Island over the week. Yeah. I mean, they were, the weather was constantly changing, terrible conditions, but uh, you seem to be uh, coming on you know, very quickly and you know, in leaps and bounds. Yeah, well, um, I've... Now I've driven more times in the wet than I've driven in the dry, so you know, getting pretty used to racing down at Phillip Island in monsoon or rain. So yeah, well, it definitely helped me out. So yeah, it'll probably help you when you know if you get, when you go to England at some stage because these are the conditions you're going to get every every day. But are you finding that you know are you finding yourself feeling a lot more comfortable in the Formula Ford now than you were sort of when you jumped out of karts and you yeah, into it? Yeah, definitely. It was a big jump going from karting to Formula Ford, but every time I drive the Formula Ford. It just gets more and more of second nature to me and just don't think about certain things like gear changing and braking. So it's just every time I go out, I'm just getting a little bit more used to the car and getting a little bit more faster. It's all working out pretty good. So what are the plans for next year? You're a member of the uh, CAMS Rising Star program for 2010. Uh, what's, the, what's the plan? Are you doing the National Series or just the State Series? Uh, we'll, do a bit of, we'll do all the National Series and a few State Rounds just to keep up with all the other drivers, like doing lots of testing and all that and do... Quite a lot of pre-season testing, get me up to standard in the first, well, I think the first round is going to be at Melbourne Grand Prix, so it should be a big race to start off at, so we we'll definitely need to be up to speed by then, and then we'll just carry on through the year for, with the Cam's Rising Stars for the National Series, so it should be great fun. Jeff, you must be, uh, you must be pretty happy with the way he's going at the moment. I mean, they're only early days yet, but I mean, a, a couple of good performances so far. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when, we, when CAMS lowered the age uh, for everybody to, to get their licence, uh, we decided that uh, there was no, no real point doing karting anymore, so we jumped straight in to do some testing with Formula Ford. And uh, as Matthew said, it's a, it's a really big jump, jump from karters to go to a you know, a proper race car, and but um, yeah, he um, you know once he got over and got used to it, um, the last uh, couple of times we've been out, he's made uh, fantastic uh, performance, uh, you know, jumps if you like, and uh, um, you know at the weekend uh, I thought he drove really really well, so it was, uh, it was very promising at this stage. Of course, you know, coming from a, a, a motorsport background yourself and all that, I mean you've. You, you, your dad's gone through it. I mean, so Jack's watched you and David and Gary come through, and now you're doing the same thing with Matthew. I mean, you, have you got more of a sort of sympathy for now for what he went through? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's difficult. I mean, it's, uh, when you're racing yourself, um, it, it's a lot easier than watching any of your family members race. And uh, uh, I get a lot more nervous actually watching Matthew race than I ever did uh, when I was racing myself. And uh, even yeah, on the Molson straight. <laughs> uh, well, the Molson was wasn't too bad, but uh, yeah, when the only race I really got nervous at uh, was the Indy 500 that that was uh, probably the the race that really churns your stomach up more than the others the others you know are not too bad that's a, it's your job and, and you get used to it but uh, it's interesting you mention that because you know like uh, I think perhaps it was the last time that we spoke to spoke to your father he was saying that you know the Indy 500 was far from him I mean he had you know, just escaped a really really bad crash there mm. and it was far from his favorite race and he's watched you go through I mean if Matthew comes to you in about four or five years time and say hey dad I've got an Indy racing league drive are you going to say go for it son or are you going to say no way well I, uh, what i say is probably not going to make any difference whatsoever but uh yeah look um i mean, look i really enjoyed racing there it, it was an unbelievable challenge uh, when you got it right there was no other feeling like it in the world but if you got it wrong or the car wasn't right it was the worst feeling in the world so uh um yeah i mean i raced there 10 times and um you know i certainly if matthew 
uh, wants to go that way, um, you know, who am I to say no? Because I did it myself. So, Matthew, what are your plans at the moment? I mean, in terms of the, the short term, I mean, where do you want to go after Formula Ford? Let's just assume that everything goes according to plan. After Formula Ford, what are the plans? Well, the plans would be probably to go over to England and do a couple of races over there, but it's just budget, really. Like, and it costs so much money to make it over there. But then the ultimate goal would be probably Formula One in the final run, because I guess that's just the final level of racing, and um, it's the highest level and it's the most prestigious, so it's just what I want to do, really. We saw earlier, I think it was last week, the, the city of Melbourne have named a laneway after, uh, after, after your grandfather, after Sir Jack, uh, near Monaco House, uh, coincidentally. I mean, you know, is, is that something that you're, you keep in mind? I mean, the, the fact that you, you are a Brabham, that you come from this incredible chain of, of very successful racing drivers? Yeah, definitely. I hear all the stories and I hear all the events going on and it just inspires me, really, just to follow in their footsteps, if you know what I mean, so... I mean, I suppose when you hear all the stories from your granddad, I mean, you must wonder sometimes whether most of them are true. And the, the frightening <laughs> thing is, most of them probably are. Yes. Uh, the frightening thing is they're all true. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely hearing all the dangerous stories and near-death experiences, you know, it's a bit daunting, but I think times have changed and it's a bit safer now. Like, I haven't had any drivers die in Formula 1 for a long time when they were having 30 a year die in his racing, so... Yes, so things have certainly changed. Jeff, I mean, from the time that you, that you raced it, you know, which wasn't that long ago, I mean, the, the changes in the, the safety of the cars is just amazing, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, um, you know, when you drive the cars, you don't really think about it that much, but if you go back and um, you see a car you drove even five years ago, I mean, you wouldn't get in it now. It's, uh, you know, the, the, the safety is a lot better. The tracks are a lot better. And, um, uh, and in some ways the driving is a little bit different too because the safer the cars, the safer the tracks, the, the driving can get a little bit more aggressive because the, the penalties of getting it wrong are not so severe. But particularly when my dad was driving, um, you know, people didn't take so many risks because the penalties were, were, were the obvious. So um, slightly different driving styles now as well. You've both been at a, you just come straight from a function at the uh, Automotive Centre of Excellence, which is a Kangan Batman uh, TAFE thing. Uh, the, the, what's the involvement with them at the moment, and uh, what, were you, what were you doing tonight? Oh, well, they were supplying us a car this year um, and doing a program where they'd send out their, um, their students to, out to the races and help me out a bit like that. So we had this little uh, function thing event so to help drum up a bit of sponsorship, hopefully. So, yeah. Well, best of luck for the for the future. I mean, Thank we'll you. watch you over the course of next year. And uh, and Jeff, I mean, you know, like, thanks for coming in. And uh, the Brabham family, you just you know, famous, of course, in in Australian motorsport. But for now, uh, Matthew Brabham, Jeff Brabham, thanks for joining okay. us in pit lane. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Is it hot enough for you? How about that? In Pit Lane, the Summer Series, proudly brought to you by the All Seasons Eco Resort, Phillip Island.